You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. Hypocritical, so hypocritical. But anyway, anyway, we've got Jeff on the line. Jeff uh, is David. If you tell me right, Jeff's a member of the UAW, right? He is. He's a UAW member. That's about all I know. He's a. Okay. I think he said it was four seven seven. Jeff, you still with us, brother? Yeah, I am, and it's not the UAW. It's the Iron Workers. Iron Workers. My apology. Uh, oh, it's all good. I appreciate what y'all are doing, uh, putting the word out about organized labor. Y'all doing a great job. Well, we're trying. I just wanted to uh, hit on a few comments that y'all talked about so far this morning, like the the protest. Uh, you look at what's happening up there in Wisconsin. That's uh, a prime example of the uh, the people that are counter protesting. I guess you'd say kind of. Uh, not following their own rules. You look at the 17-year-old kid that uh, that killed two people a couple of days ago with the uh, the Jacob Blake protest, and, I mean, the cops let him walk right by him, you know, and uh, he wasn't even uh, uh, legal to be outside at that time due to the, uh, the curfew, but he was there and he shot folks, and hey, they had to pick him up a day later where the, a cop can shoot a black guy seven times in the back, and it's all good. So that's... Uh, that's kind of a dividing point of, uh, of my membership because they uh, they typically lean a little bit more right than I do. I'm uh, I'm, I'm fairly liberal minded in uh, in all aspects of life, but uh, that's, it is. Uh, I, I don't know. I was kind of curious on what y'all thoughts were on that because I know David's a, a big pro Second Amendment guy like myself. But uh, you know, when you've got people that are out there counter protesting, carrying uh, AR-15s. Uh, it shouldn't even be out in public at that time. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm you're. You're speaking my language because I'm. I'm fairly left leaning, but I'm also extremely liberty minded when it comes to you know freedom of speech, the First Amendment, and the Second Amendment rights. I mean, there's a reason those two came first and second. You know, one so we could speak our mind in public, and two so if they tried to take away our right to speak, we could defend it. You know, uh, but. It really bothered me. I, I watched that video within probably a couple of hours of it happening, and uh, I was taken back by the fact that this kid is walking right down the middle of the street. Now he raises his hands a couple of times, you know, to show that he's no threat, but then he reaches right back down and grabs his gun, and then he raises his hands again, then he slings his gun around back. And I'm just sitting there thinking, if that was a African-American, a black person, in this country, what would have happened? You know, I, he would have been shot. I, I, I truly believe that. I don't know that he would have been shot, but I guarantee you, when he reached for that gun that second time, when they told him to get out of the street, I got a mm-hmm. funny feeling he would have been executed right there in cold blood. Right. And everyone, and everyone would have been saying, just like they were saying with the Jacob uh, Blake thing. Well, he had a gun, and I mean, he had a knife in his car. He had a knife in his car. Well, the guy had a AR strapped around his neck. And look, don't get me wrong, folks. I'm not against ARs. I own an AR. Shoot it in my backyard. But but the, you are surrounded by cops. And, and he walked right through them. And just 24 hours or 48 hours earlier, we've got a black gentleman that's walking away from cops. And they don't even know that he's got a knife. And, and he shot seven times in the back. It's it's a it's a complete double standard. And if nobody sees the double standard, then you're lying to yourself. Well, and you can look at the, uh, the like the history of California, which now is the or for the last I guess 15 years has been the most anti-gun state, maybe besides New Jersey. That uh, back in the 60s when the Black Panther Party movement started, the uh, the Republican government over there. I mean, up to that point, they have been. Uh, extremely uh, pro-gun and then once they saw the Black Panthers coming out in the street legally yeah. with firearms that was when they started passing the anti-gun laws. That yeah. was Republican that did that not that was that, that was Reagan. The, uh, the that, was Reagan. that was Ronald Reagan. That was Ronald Reagan that done that. You're they absolutely yeah. right. Yeah, and you know, you know, Jeff, that makes me so like when I cuz I see like re- hashtag #resistance liberal type folks sharing about how um 
uh, how Reagan banned open carry in California. Like he's like, oh, you know, the Republicans now are so crazy because they're so pro gun. And look at Ray Reagan. He was a reasonable, moderate Republican. And it's like, no, 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 no. Uh, Reagan was as right wing as they come, including with reference to gun control, because the the prominent right wing you know uh like like kind of like fascistic leaning segment through uh the, the right wing party of the united states has always been anti-black and so that came through in his gun control the only reason that they banned that reagan banned open carry in california is because the black panther party in the middle of segregation which if there's ever you know it like the second amendment folks like if you if you actually believe that the second amendment is so that you can stand up to government tyranny the black panther party you should have a picture of huey newton on your wall you should have a picture of fred hampton on your wall and you should take down your picture of reagan because he saw himself as diametrically opposed to the black panther party i mean it's so like i hate seeing you know, hashtag resistance liberal type folks sharing that stuff about Reagan because it, the motivation there was just patently racist, and they, right. they don't and most, you know they don't know their history just actually, like the just like the right wing folks they don't know no one knows their history. Most folks that are actually uh, truly left left wing uh, uh, radicals like myself, and I'm sure you guys realize that, that Second Amendment is what protects all of us from. Uh, you know, a, a fascist government or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, yeah, there's a disconnect there between us and, and what most people would call uh, uh, the typical Democratic liberal uh, in that regard. But it, it's uh, that's just uh, the only way we can we can defend ourselves against tyranny is, is that way. And, uh, yeah, and Reagan, he kind of started putting the knife in it uh, back in the 60s, and it was strictly a racial thing. It didn't have anything to do with it pro or anti-gun uh, and, and that's that's failed to be recognized in, especially in North Alabama where uh, you know you've got racism rampant and uh, and of course everybody's uh, everybody's got a gun here and uh, you know it, it's a big divide of, of, of among my membership especially uh, mm -hmm. and it, yeah, I had well, an interesting just... conversation with a, a former member yesterday about it and, uh, got pretty well I actually kicked him out of my office on account of it because uh, right. you know I'm not going to hear this crap Right. Yeah. Well, you ought to. You, you know, you can just tell them, like I hear a lot. You you go left far enough, and you get your guns back. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that is the truth. Back there. That is the truth. Uh, and I also I also called to point out. I know you guys were talking about the the lack of, uh, I guess, of of union representation at the DNC. That was. Uh, I'm not sure. And, I, and I'm not advocating for Biden in any ways. Personally, that's who I'll be voting for. But that's. Uh, uh, thankfully, that's my choice. But uh, I think that what they were trying to accomplish there was to get as many fence travelers as possible and maybe just try to prove that he's actual human rather than a autocrat running under uh, Putin. And, you know, I'm assuming that's what it is. I know that my internationals worked extensively with the Biden campaign on infrastructure packages and. Uh, and he has made the commitment to the building trades that he will have somebody from labor on his uh, seats and uh you know i have no reason to doubt that but uh i do agree that it was kind of disappointing to see the, the lack of union representation on the tv screen that was uh looks to me like a missed opportunity to show that hey we're uh we're pro worker uh, hey jeff, anti hang on. jeff hang on one minute we're, we, we're going into a break folks you're listening to the valley labor report we'll be right uh, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate your time. Uh, if you want to see what we're up to throughout the week and get our snide quips about the news of the day, then you should follow us on social media. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Valley Labor Report. We're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore A-L. David is on Twitter at Radical Unionist. That's spelled R-A-D-I-C-L Unionist. 
If you miss part of the show and want to go back and watch it later, search YouTube for The Valley Labor Report and subscribe to our channel. You can go back and watch the full show there, and we also clip segments throughout the week. And we also upload the program on more than 11 different podcasting apps. So you can see if we're on your listening platform of choice, you can go to The Valley Labor Report dot transistor dot fm slash subscribe and if you appreciate our work and want to help us stay on the air then consider throwing us a couple dollars a month on patreon.com slash the valley labor report